What's going on guys, what's cracking? Today is a timing belt day. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to time a BBTI engine. Now this concept will work for the non-BBTI and the BBTI, and I'm trying to go over some misconceptions that people seem to have with the BBTI engine over the non-BBTI and try to square up some things that people think is the truth and it's really not. Before I get into today's video too, I wanna to go ahead and thank the guys over at Night Run Garage. They went ahead and Cerakoted and rebuilt the VVTi gear on my 2JZ engine. Now, if you have a non-VVTi, you won't have this, but if you have a VVTi 2JZ or a 1JZ, you'll have this gear, and yes, it does need rebuilt, and let me explain why. So, unlike most people realize, this actually has oil that goes through this that actually can move this. So, if you actually see here, this gear actually does move, and it has to do with the solenoid. There's more to it that I'm not gonna go on today in this video, but this does actually move, and there's oil that actually goes through this. There are seals that go inside of there that you're supposed to be able to get through Toyota, but you can't. You have to buy a whole new gear. You can buy some ones from eBay, but they all suck, and they don't fit. Well, Night Run Garage took their time and actually got and sourced their own Viton uh, seals that you can buy directly from their site, or what you can do is send this gear that to them directly and they'll rebuild the gear for you and they'll do this pretty sweet Cerakote on it for you. Now, this is for me, this blue is what I wanted. You don't have to pick the blue. They're gonna be doing like this dark gray color, uh, which I'm pretty stoked about. Uh, this for me, I just thought was different. You're never gonna see it again. Once we put the valve cover over or the spark plug cover, you'll never see this again. But for me, I just thought this was cool and different, so why not try it? But again, Night Run Garage is rebuilding these guys. If you wanna check out down below or just go to the website right here, uh, they'll take care of you. Again, it's Ben and Chris that are rebuilding these things. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Let me explain how you guys time a VVTi engine. All right, before we dive into this, before we get too deep, what we're gonna do first is we're gonna tighten down the cam gears. I left them loose on purpose because I wanna show you this. See this VVTi gear? This doesn't move right now, right? Obviously, if I'd actually crank it, that would move the timing. But if you can see here, this moves, but your actual cam does not. So don't be worried about that, guys. That's just how it's going to be for right now. What you're gonna do is crank this down. This is a 17 millimeter um, hex, and this is a, I believe, I wanna say it's a 10. Yes, this is a 10 in here. So make it pretty simple. 17 millimeter and a 10. Uh, so we're going ahead and crank it down. There is a little area here where you can put a box wrench on it, hold it down. These are cranked down to 60 foot pounds. Again, guys, both are cranked down to 60 foot pounds. So let's go ahead and show you that on camera. So we're gonna start with the non-VVTI side first. Make sure it's somewhat tight. We've got a wrench back here and I've got this torqued down to 60 foot pounds. You guys heard it? There we go. That's torqued down to 60 now, guys. So now we need to move over to the next VVTi gear and crank that down. Now we're gonna remove our hex dial and move back over to our keyway style. So that goes in there like so. Put that in there like that. Move this guy over here. So we get that back on the cam. There we go. And that's it guys. I'm um, just holding the cam as best as I can there. So now that's nice and tight. And so with this one, now we can go ahead and start timing this and lining this up. Now one other misconception I wanna get over today is the VVTi 2JZ GTE engine is non-interference. I wanna repeat, the 2JZ GTE VVTi motor is non-interference, just like the 2JZ GTE non-VVTi is non-interference. Now. The 2JZ GE VVTi is an interference motor. That's a misconception that people seem to have a lot of problem with. I wanted to clear that up right now. So if I would spin one of these cams right now, even though it's not perfectly at TDC and everything, or if I even put that head at top dead center and I would spin one of those cams, it's not gonna bottom out. That being said, because I have factory cams, it's still non-interference. If I were to go to an aftermarket cam, had a more aggressive cam in the car, it would most likely be an interference engine then, and then you would most likely have that problem. But with it being a factory setup, it's not interference, so I'm gonna make that clear. So if you guys are just doing a stock setup, this is what you wanna follow, and you'll have no problem. Before we get any further also, I wanted to go ahead and show you the part number for the timing belt. I always use a factory Toyota belt. Some guys use gates. I prefer just using a factory Toyota belt, especially for the power we're gonna be looking for on this build. So that is the part number you'll need. Comes with the new little card to, if you want to put it on the front of the engine itself. I'm not obviously going to use this because I think it's ugly, but that's the part number that you'll need, uh, and that's the factory timing belt from Toyota. Next up, what we're going to do is line everything up. There's little tick marks that need to be lined up. I'm gonna show you what they mean and why you need to line them up in the manner that we're going to do. Another thing I need to do is put this cap back on. This cap keeps this here, everything encapsulated. So there's no, I'm not sure what the exact foot pounds for this is. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure it's tight. 
Um, it just uses a crush washer, so I'm gonna put that on and then put that 10 back inside of there and then crank this down and then we'll be able to mo move on and then line up the marks. So first thing we're gonna do is start with the crank here. I've got my wrench on already, which is a 22 millimeter. You wanna go ahead and put your crank bolt in and we're just using this as spin. You don't need to make it tight, just need to be on here just enough so we can spin the crank around. So what we're gonna do is this. All right guys, so you can see here we have our little tick mark right here. This is to get to TDC. And then we have our little mark right here which is actually on the crank gear itself. We wanna make sure this little tick mark here and this little dot line up. So I'm gonna take my 22 millimeter and try to spin this around. Try to get it lined up as best as possible. Went slightly past it, so I'm gonna go back just a little bit and right there. You can see how both of them are lined up straight up and down from each other. Now what we need to do is move up to the cam gears and line them up with the plate backing plate. What we need to do is, see these little black marks here at the top? You got a little mark right here and a little mark here. This is your backing plate that helps you line up for tining. Now we've got our VBTI gear, which as you can see here, can move back and forth. Now here's what I wanna tell you guys so you don't mess up. There's a little dot on both of these cam gears. Do not, I repeat, do not base it off the dot. There's a little line that goes to the cam gear on both of them. It'll go through it, you'll see, I marked it in black here to try and make it as more obvious for you guys here today. Uh, that's what you're gonna line up with. My VGI gear, I've already got lined up. It's lined up perfectly with the little hash mark, the little tick mark here on the, on the backing plate. But my other gear is not, so I need to go ahead and move that first. I need to grab my 17 millimeter here. I put my hand down, but I need to move it till it goes lined up with it. Now one thing you'll notice, as you'll see, it's not perfectly perpendicular, right? It's slightly off to the right some. And you're like, well Ryan, that's wrong. Well what the problem is here is, from the book it tells you it needs to be slightly to the right. If you're sitting in front of the motor, it's to the right of its sum. Uh, that's how the book shows it, so don't be worried or don't be off. It needs to be slightly over there. Now, after that's all lined up, what we can do next is put on the belt, guys, and uh, we're almost done. It's that easy, guys. It's not that crazy. It's nothing over the top to do this. So again, make sure you line up with these little marks here on the backing plate. Uh, remember, this can move up to 30%, so don't be worried with this. You're moving, if you're making this, don't spin it this way. You wanna make sure you're spinning it this way because you want it to be taunt, uh, and make sure this is lined up perfectly, and then you get your little hash mark, mark up that. And remember, down at the bottom, we already did our crank gear. Make sure the little hash mark with the little dot is lined up also. Alright guys, next up what we're going to do is line up our timing belt. We're going to start with our VBTI gear. So this is how I like to do it. I usually shove this down like so. Forget about this gear even exists. We want to make sure this side is as taunt as possible because this is the side that we have our tensioner on and this will apply pressure to anything that's loose. But this side of the belt needs to be as tight as possible. So we're starting with this. You don't need to start anywhere. The belt obviously is a circular piece. So we press that on. Then we go down, put this on. Now, we want to make sure again, this is as tight as possible. If we've lined the tack or the hash marks up right, it should slide right on, which is our sliding on. Let's see if it does here. We move that over some. Uh oh, don't want to lose it. Here we go. Move it again. And then we can go onto this side now. Now if this is lined up right, it should. Now I need to, might need to finagle you with some, but right now, see how tight that is? Sorry if I'm in the way, guys. If you guys see, it's nice and tight right now. But if I go over here, it looks like I might need to come this way just a smidge more. It might be slightly off. So I might need to take this, grab my socket, and bring it just a smidge more. And now we're lined up. Push that on, press this on. With the top of your gears, I try to keep it dead center as much as you can. So move this back and forth to its center. There we go. That's what I wanna see. Guys, another thing too, is if you see the top of your belt and it looks like squishy and loose, you're like, oh my God, I must have spun this too far. If it's already lined up and it has a little bit of looseness here, if it's a little, well, I guess for the actual proper word, be not taunt or tight enough, just take this, put your 17 millimeter back on it. Get your ratchet here. Take this and spin it back and it'll tighten this up and this will be nice and tight in between here now and this area will be loose. Again, this can be loose. This does not matter because you're gonna put your tensioner here which is going to press on it like so. Um, so next up, what we're going to do actually is put your tensioner in. Then I'm gonna show you how to put your crank dampener in. We obviously have to take this bolt off and I'm gonna explain what this plate does. I'm actually waiting for the part to come in for this. So before we get to this, which we do need to do before we install anything else, just to be safe, because God forbid it would move. I just would rather be safe than sorry, having as much tension on this as possible. Um, 
I wanna explain what this little plate does here. You'll see this little plate, right? And it looks just like anything else. But if you see here, it has a little bit of a curvature to it. That curved side, the side that kind of bevels out towards this way, you wanna make sure that's put towards the belt. Um, the whole point of it is to make sure the belt doesn't slip off. So you put that on like that, and once you put your crank dampener on, this holds it tight then, and it puts it against this belt so it doesn't slip out this way. The top of your cam gears and everything else are left loose. That's what keeps it on, so that's very pertinent and very important. Um, one thing you'll notice too when you guys' engine does start, if you do see your belt moving back and forth just ever so slightly, that's 1,000% normal. Do not freak out, do not worry. I get that message all the time. They go, Ryan, my belt's moving. That's 100% normal, guys. If I took it off my Super right now and we're showing the engine moving, that belt's going back and forth ever so slightly it's not massively it's moving like this then we've got other issues uh, but if it's just moving back ever so slightly that's 100 normal and i don't want you guys freaking out all right guys now the last thing you need to do is, is put the actual tensioner in um now one thing you guys will notice here what you guys will have and i'm uh, a little perturbed right now i'm a little upset but i'm trying not to show it on camera um, there should be a pin inside of here that releases the actual tension off of this somehow some way the pin is missing this is a brand new piece and the pin's not there this even had a giant tag on it that says, hey, don't remove the pin until you've tightened it up. But the pin's not there. Great, so unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do this the way I don't like to do it, but these bolts do reach. I'm gonna have to pull this up slowly. Um, so you're gonna draw this up to it builds up tension and it'll put tension here on the pulley. It's already got some tension on it, but I'm gonna slowly draw these up and then it puts enough tension on it that it fully holds the belt. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll finish this up and then we'll be done putting this together. Now that that's all tightened up, Guys, we are complete. This is it, we are done. So that's it guys. That's all you need to do to set up and time your 2JZ GTE motor. Um, everything's good. We've got plenty of tension now on this side, nice and tight here. Everything's mocked up for the timing marks down here at the crank too. So we are done. I hope this helped you guys out. I hope this was informational. I hope this helped you guys out today. If there's anything else you need to know, let me know down in the comments. Uh, I'm trying to help you out as best I can. Again, this works for the 2JZ GTE and the 2JZ GTE VVTi. Again, this won't work for the 2JZ GE VVTi, uh, just for the fact that, well, that is an interference motor, so you gotta be careful with that. So when I, when I was showing with the cams and stuff, you gotta be a little bit more careful, but the same concept does work there. Um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, let me know. Thank you guys very much, and I'll talk to you later. Peace. There goes a sight from my soul.